What's up, everybody? Today, Bill Tendo is going to be teaching you about something weird about the Sega Dreamcast. Now, this is the Dreamcast Orange, right? And we have the Dreamcast Orange in the United States. Now, the Dreamcast was actually released in Japan on November 27th of 1998. It wasn't released in America until 9999. We will never forget that date. So basically, this box here is a really cool Japanese exclusive collectible. And there's a reason for that. And I'm going to get to it. The Dreamcast was awesome. It's where I learned to play Tony Hawk Pro Skater. It's a standard white console in this box. However, they did have a white version of this box in Japan and a plain white box. And I know what you're thinking, Bill. If it comes with the normal stuff, why is the box any different? Well, you know, first off, Dreamcast had a lot of really cool control, had a lot of cool accessories. It had the VMU, which I know a guy that turns those into little bitty Game Boys. That's awesome. They had the microphone for C-Man. Wait, that's for GameCube. Um, light gun for House of the Dead. Am I right? So Dreamcast had a lot of really cool stuff. But this box here is what I wanted to talk about because this box is awesome. So in Japan, uh, the managing director of Sega, uh, I'm going to completely butcher his name. So I'm just going to say his last name, Yakawa. Uh, it's Hezuka Yakawa. I can't pronounce the first name properly, and I apologize. The, ma the managing marketing director... The guy started appearing in commercials. They put him in like special features of games like where Shinmu disc and he was in one of the Sonic games. Uh, he got really, really popular in Japan because of his excitement for the Dreamcast. He's not a trained actor or anything like that, but in Japan only because he became such a celebrity because of this. We got the Yakawa box. He is literally on the Sega Dreamcast box getting into a car. This is one of my favorite things. Uh, we just don't see stuff like this. It's really cool. This guy's not an actor. He's not the CEO of the company. He's the marketing director, but he was so, so in love with the Dreamcast and everything it could do that he was out there in public. He started appearing in commercials. He was he actually went to stores to deliver Dreamcast so that they could be uh, sold. And he would hand them out in the stores because, little fun fact, Sega is way more popular in Japan than America. Uh, Sega is also super popular in um, Europe. Uh, the Genesis and Nintendo Wars... In Europe, Sega actually won. In the U.S., they did not. However, in Japan, Sega is still super popular. People love the Mega Drive. They love the Saturn. They love the Dreamcast all across the board. So you get a different kind of culture to where all of a sudden the managing marketing director is out there handing these out on the street. He's in commercials. He's special features in games. And he got his own box. And like I said, it's just a regular white Dreamcast inside, uh, regular white controller. They did have sport models, uh, uh, which was the black one. They had the pink Hello Kitty. They had a model for, or, um, uh, I can't remember the name of the game right offhand. There's a whole series of them, like four of them. It's on the tip of my tongue. They had so many cool accessories for Dreamcast, especially in Japan. They got a keyboard we didn't get for Typing of the Dead. And it's a clear keyboard where you can see everything in it, and they call it the Skeleton Keyboard. They're really cool. If you can find one, definitely get one. Anyway, I just wanted to show you guys this Sega Dreamcast box because it's one of my favorite things. It's really weird from an American sensibility, and I'm really glad it exists. So check you guys later.